7 o'clock this evening, Eastern Time, Air and Naval Forces of the United States launched a series of strikes against the headquarters, terrorist facilities, and military assets that support Muammar Gaddafi's subversive activities. The attacks were concentrated and carefully targeted to minimize casualties among the Libyan people, with whom we have no quarrel. From initial reports, our forces have succeeded in their mission. Several weeks ago in New Orleans, I warned Colonel Gaddafi we would hold his regime accountable for any new terrorist attacks. What can you tell us, Ben? Uh, it wasn't a possible bomb or explosion. It was a bomb uh, that fell about, uh, I'd say, 100 feet from where we are. And that was the second bomb to fall nearby us today, dropped by Libyan aircraft. Uh, we were the second bomb fell while we were just outside of Brega, uh, which is now appears to be under the control of anti Qaddafi forces after a day long battle uh, between Libyan army soldiers and essentially the militia of the opposition. We were at a hospital where uh, they were pretty steadily bringing in more wounded. According to the hospital there, at least four people dead, 23 wounded, and of course that's only one hospital in the area. Other wounded are being taken further up the road. But uh, clearly, Muammar Gaddafi is not uh, sitting tight in Tripoli. He is trying to reassert uh, his control over the rest of the country. And Ben, this may be You're difficult done? to answer at this point, but based on where this bomb, this explosion happened, do you believe that Gaddafi was targeting citizens? Well, I, I think what they were targeting was a large group of people. In both cases today, uh, we were among uh, well over 100 uh, people from this area, some of them armed, some of them not. Uh, but clearly the Air Force saw this as a target and uh, therefore dropped those bombs. And the people who were, who were hit, those civilians, were these demonstrators, were these protesters, were these people who were actually armed or just people walking around? Can you describe for us what that scene was? Well, in the second scene, we were at the edge of Brega where there was a sign that had some pictures of Qaddafi on it. People were ripping them down, uh, trying to set it on fire. And uh, so there was a large number of people, many of them, of course, armed. Others just local residents out celebrating what they see as a victory over Qaddafi's forces. And, you know, we're surmising that there may they, the Libyans may have received intelligence uh, that there were a large number of opponents of the regime in that area. Now, the first bomb that occurred, nobody was hurt. The second bomb, I, th I suspect people were injured, but uh, we left the area uh, very quickly out of fear that another bomb uh, would fall. But we did see ambulances uh, going in that direction. What was, what was the response of the people there when they realized what was taking place? Uh, at first, a panic, and then anger. Everybody who had a gun started shooting it in the direction of the airplane. In fact, I saw one man uh, throw his box of juice up in the air in the direction of the plane. People very angry uh, and uh, screaming and shouting, cursing Gaddafi uh, for this kind of attack. Because obviously, Suzanne, everybody was aware of this very long speech uh, Muammar Gaddafi made in Tripoli today uh, about how the people love him, about how he's not attacking uh, the people of Libya. And they said, look at this. This is a clear, a clear proof that, as one man told me, he's a liar. When you, when you say you left the area, you were trying to get out there as quickly as possible. Were there other people who were joining you? Did the crowd disperse? Were they all headed to another direction? Yes. Uh, yeah, you don't want to stick around when airplanes are flying overhead and dropping bombs. Everybody, in a great panic, jumped into their cars and ran away. We almost had a, an accident as we were uh, trying to escape the scene because it was pandemonium. You don't want one of those bombs to fall anywhere near you if you can avoid it. Suzanne? And, and Ben, finally, is, was there any sense when these people were panicking, they were running, they were jumping in their vehicles, did they know where to go? Did they feel like there was some place that was safe for them or, or, or not? Well, the, the safest place is somewhere else. So everybody was going somewhere else. Uh, there's nowhere to hide. This is open desert. Uh, your only protection is the terrain. If there's 
a low spot, you get in it. You hug the ground. But uh, when they were driving away, they were just driving away because I think people understand that any large collection of people and cars is an obvious target for any plane flying overhead. Son? Ben Wiedemann, uh, just out of uh, Brega there. We thank you very much. Please be safe. Uh, We're following this story. Uh, ben Wiedemann reporting now that uh, Libyan forces uh, looks to be uh, throwing and unleashing bombs on people on the ground there, uh, those uh, some armed and unarmed protesters. Action, Libyan civilians. That action has now begun. In this effort, the United States is acting with a broad coalition that is committed to enforcing United Nations Security Council Resolution 1973, which calls for the protection of the Libyan people. That coalition met in Paris today to send a unified message that it brings together many of our European and Arab partners. This is not an outcome that the United States or any of our partners sought. Even yesterday, the international community offered Muammar Gaddafi the opportunity to pursue an immediate ceasefire, one that stopped the violence against civilians and the advances of Gaddafi's forces. But despite the hollow words of his government, he has ignored that opportunity. His attacks on his own people have continued. His forces have been on the move. And the danger faced by the people of Libya has grown. I am deeply aware of the risks of any military action, no matter what limits we place on it. I want the American people to know that the use of force is not our first choice. And it's not a choice that I make lightly. But we cannot stand idly by when a tyrant tells his people that there will be no mercy. And his forces step up their assaults on cities like Benghazi and Misrata, where innocent men and women face brutality and death at the hands of their own government. So we must be clear. Actions have consequences. And the writ of the international community must be enforced. That is the cause of this coalition. As a part of this effort, the United States will contribute our unique capabilities at the front end of the mission to protect Libyan civilians and enable the enforcement of a no-fly zone that will be led by our international partners. And as I said yesterday, we will not, I repeat, we will not deploy any U.S. troops on the ground. As Commander-in-Chief, I have great confidence in the men and women of our military who will carry out this mission. They carry with them the respect of a grateful nation. I'm also proud that we are acting as part of a coalition that includes close allies and partners who are prepared to meet their responsibility to protect the people of Libya and uphold the mandate of the international community. I have acted after consulting with my national security team and Republican and Democratic leaders of Congress. And in the coming hours and days, my administration will keep the American people fully informed. But make, make no mistake, today we are part of a broad coalition. We are answering the calls of a threatened people, and we are acting in the interests of the United States and the world. Thank you very much.